Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, my name is Taylor McDonald. I am the Associate Director for Family Giving and Engagement, and I'm so happy to be here with you this morning with our Granada team um, so that our current Fordham families can learn a little bit more about our wonderful program in Spain. Um, so first of all, thank you again for joining us this morning. We do hope that all of your Families are staying safe and healthy during these trying times, but we're happy to come to you in any capacity, um, you know, as a webinar platform to help you, like I said, learn a little bit more about our wonderful program. Uh, so I do want to introduce our fabulous panelists that we have. First, we have Rafael Lamas, who is a professor and director of the Granada program uh, in Spain. And then we also have Elizabeth Collins, who is our Granada and London Center Program Advisor within our International and Study Abroad Office. Um, so thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I do want to turn it over to Elizabeth, who will just give us a brief update on the Study Abroad Program at Fordham um, as a whole before we jump into questions. Hi everyone. Um, so as I'm sure you've seen via email at this point, um, the university has made the difficult decision to continue the suspension of in-person study abroad programs for spring 21, given the ongoing um, pandemic here and, and abroad. So all accepted spring 21 students would have heard from our office separately and um, they were asked to complete a form essentially um, letting us know if they would like to defer their application or withdraw for a refund on their application fee. And we also held meetings last week, um, which spring 21 accepted students attended just to discuss those options. Um, for the spring semester, just kind of looking ahead, our office is offering a number of virtual opportunities for students who might not be able to go abroad another semester, or even students who want to defer to summer or fall 21, they're still welcome to engage in these opportunities. So um, we have a number of different virtual internship programs and then also courses being offered from our London Center and also from Granada. Wonderful, thank you so much, Elizabeth. A few notes before we do hop into questions. Um, you will notice that we are taking live questions. So if you do have a question you would like to submit, please feel free to use the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. That's where we'll be monitoring um, in-person questions. And then if you, for some reason, miss a part of this webinar, don't worry, because I'm gonna be sending a very detailed follow-up email with lots of links and resources, as well as, as, well as a recording of our session. So without further ado, for the sake of time, I would love to hop right into questions. Um, so these were pre-submitted with our registration page. Um, so I would like to start with this one, um, probably for Elizabeth. Uh, my son is a student athlete. What options are available in the January break or in the summer for um, student athletes to study abroad? Sure. Well, specifically for the Granada program, we do run a, a one month long summer program. And actually, I think Rafael might be uh, better equipped to discuss that in further detail. Do you want to go ahead? Yeah, definitely. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for being here in, in this panel and participating. I'm here in Spain and here in Granada in this beautiful day, as you can see my background. <laughs> this is not the, of course, this is not the, the view of the office uh, we wish, but we have a beautiful office and a beautiful uh, location also in this wonderful city. Regarding uh, uh, athletes, they tend to come in the summer because their schedule is very tight and very difficult. They, they, are, they have so many commitments. So generally it's, it's like that. This doesn't mean that I didn't have uh, students during the academic year, but uh, the kind of training, the professional training that they received in New York is very difficult to replicate here in Canada. So if the, the, the student is, is uh, focus in a, in a professional career or, or, or has a, a, any particular scholarship related to, 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 to sports, that's uh, very difficult to, to replicate in Granada during the spring or the fall. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Um, how are the three Granada programs different from each other, meaning the fall program, the spring program, and the summer program? I think that question is for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, the uh, this, let's begin with the summer program. Summer program is, is about five weeks, which uh, every student can take 
either an upper level course or a language course, depending on their language skills and their or they wish. Uh, they uh, they live in, in host families as in the other programs, uh, and we travel around Andalusia a little bit. We go to Seville, to Cordoba, to other places. It's uh, in the summer, in the in, it's generally the month of June, no? end of May until beginning of July, or maybe just July first. Uh, it's uh, it's a very beautiful moment in Granada. You know, it's uh, everybody is celebrating the summer, so it's a very, there's a kind of very positive spirit. Uh, this program has been running for many, many years already, almost more than 15. For that one, I already lost the count. No? For the fall, the fall program is uh, it's a program that allows students to study either in Spanish or English, depending on their, well, their, their preferences. Um, uh, not, this doesn't happen in the spring. In the spring, we want only students who, who are uh, focusing just in Spanish. However, in the, in, in, in the fall, uh, we, we might have uh, native speakers or majors in Spanish no? uh, uh, with in the same group with students who who maybe are not fluent in Spanish and, and maybe are not even interested in Spanish. They will have to take nonetheless one class in a language class, okay, those non-proficient uh, students and the rest of the classes will be in English. Uh, for the activities in the fall and the spring are the same. We go to Morocco, we go to Portugal, we travel in southern Spain, we have, have social services, we have internships in hospitals, in NGOs, in companies, in, in businesses, uh, in schools also. And there is a, a very large uh, uh, number of, of courses they can choose from, uh, covering almost uh, all majors and minors. So, the, dif the difference of the programs in the, in the fall and, in, and the spring depends very, really much on what the student wants, where their schedules, their graduation, uh, their requirements, whatever, these, these other options. So, and for the spring, which is the oldest program we had, I think um, we require uh, the so-called 2001 level in Spanish in the, in the modern language department, which it would be a kind of proficiency level. Of course, we know that students, when they arrive to Spain, most likely are not proficient and they will improve their language and they will continue their, their studies. No? But as a way of organizing ourselves, we have decided that for the spring, uh, students have uh, need to have completed that level, the 2001 level. Wonderful. Thank you, Rafael. Our next question is for Elizabeth. Can you talk about timing in terms of the application process? Um, can you specifically address anyone who is interested in um, traveling abroad the spring semester of 2022 when they should look into applying? Sure. So for any um, spring run program, applications will open typically around April 15th. Um, I would say April 1st to April 15th is when our office usually opens the applications. Um, there's an early action phase that runs until May 31st, and then there's a final action phase that runs till October 1st. Um, the main difference between early action and final action is there is a discount on the application fee. So in the early action phase, it's $125. In the final action phase, it's going to be $175. And of course, applying in the early action phase just gives you you know, more time certainly to prepare for the spring semester. Um, and we do see higher numbers for applicants for the spring semester. So we always encourage students looking into studying abroad um, during the spring to just try to apply in the early action phase if at all possible. Great, thank you. Um, this question is for Raphael regarding classes offered. Um, so will classes for specific majors be available? Specifically, um, this attendee is asking, are Chinese language classes offered? Well, uh, as I said, there are so many, many classes, uh, even more than for in New York, because we partner with the University of Granada, which is one of the biggest universities in Europe. Okay? And we have classes in, in almost every major and minor, of course. In order to 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 join some of these classes, a uh, certain level of Spanish is, is needed. Okay, so uh, if a student is 
the beginner or intermediate level in their classes will, <laughs> this student will, won't have all these classes available. Okay, let's put in those terms. In the case of Chinese, it's a very particular question, I have to say. I mean, uh, generally, we don't have students who come to Spain to, to learn a new language, if it's possible. Uh, we have classes for sure in, in Arabic, in French, in Russian, in Italian, in many other languages. In the case of Chinese, we had a student in the past. However, now uh, the classes at the university have been moved to an institute which is connected with the university. I, I should have. Uh, to investigate if this student is interested. Uh, in the past, we had with a student and did those credits transfer to, to, to Portland. Now, since uh, these Chinese classes are in a different location within the university, I have to, to check out in that if it's available. Great, thank you. This question is for Elizabeth. Um, can you touch on how it looks like financially for families who have a student who is studying abroad and what the cost looks like? Sure, so the um, Fordham and Granada program is great because it's run through Fordham. So all of your financial aid will be portable with the exception of Metro grants, room specific aid and work study. So any scholarships that you receive through Fordham will be applied to your tuition while you're in Granada. Um, so students who are participating in the Fordham and Granada program typically will be charged a very similar amount to what they pay um, if they were to stay in New York for the semester. The main difference um, is going to be the housing, which I believe is about $3,000 for the semester. Um, and then there is a program fee, I believe it's currently about $90, which includes um, the trips that Rafael mentioned and then also overseas health insurance. And then there's a small study abroad fee and a general fee and technology fee. Um, but overall, again, a student will be paying a very similar amount if they were in New York, especially because all of your scholarship money and financial aid is portable. If, if I may, uh, there is also an important aspect, which is the housing. If a student is in, in New York, generally housing in New York is more expensive than, than in Granada, and also living expenses. Uh, Granada is a, it's a cheap city where you can do so many things for free, uh, going to concerts, going to cultural events, but also going to, to cafes uh, and, and pubs. You know? I mean, it's, everything is, is very reasonable. Uh, it's, Southern Europe, no, not New York City. And this definitely makes a difference. Wonderful, thank you for adding that. Um, Rafael, I know you already touched on this, but we are getting a lot of questions on courses and if they are all taught in Spanish or all taught in English, or if it is a mix of both. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, that's, that's a very important question. I mean, uh, Classes are the huge majority taught in Spanish, okay? Uh, what happened? That we have many courses also in English, courses in sociology, politics, economy, business, history, so religion, so, so many, so many also in English, no? Uh, but maybe we don't have a course on psychology <laughs> in English. We don't have a, a course on computer science in English or, or, or law, because law can be studied at a, undergraduate level in Spain. So uh, uh, the idea is that um, most, uh, most of the students who came uh, to Granada with the goal of studying English, they had been able to, to, to do that. We have so many courses, for instance, in economy and business, no? that many students require that too. But for the, for the rest, it's mostly, mostly in Spanish. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, this question might be for, for both of you, um, but can you guys touch on how credits work um, in terms of courses taken abroad and how that applies to their credits at, to the, towards their degree as a whole? Yeah, I can, I can touch on that. Um, so in either semester, the students will be taking, as Rafael mentioned, one course directly with him. That is a Fordham course, so that will be, you know, transferred automatically. Um, towards the student um, transcript, it will appear on degree works. And then any courses that the student is taking through University of Granada or the CLM, um, they will complete a course approval form through our office and we give that right to them in their study abroad portal. So it's very convenient. Um, they'll just take it to their major advisor or minor advisor, depending on what they want the uh, classes to count towards. 
and they'll complete a course approval process with their advisor. So their advisor will take a look at the classes they want to take in Spain and make sure that they can count either towards their major or minor. Wonderful, thank you, Elizabeth. And it definitely seems like from what Raphael said, there's lots to choose from. So that's so wonderful. Um, I think this also goes to you, Elizabeth, what fraction of applicants typically go to Granada? Um, is there usually a wait list for students? Sure, um, Raphael can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think we've seen a wait list before um, for, for programs um, in Granada specifically. Um, but yeah, as long as students meet the requirements to study abroad, which is a 3.0 GPA, clear disciplinary record, and then they'll need a recommendation from their major advisor um, and a recommendation from Rafael as well. And then they'll complete some essay prompts. As long as they meet those requirements, typically, you know, we see students being accepted. Um, there usually isn't an issue with that. We usually have room in, in Granada. Yeah, uh, we have been growing, uh, fortunately, which is very positive things. It has been a demand from the students. This program started small and now it's medium size, I would say. <laughs> it's not that small. Um, and we try to accommodate uh, all students who want to come. However, it's important to be able to, to, to complete with the requirements, you know, to, to, to meet the requirements. Uh, and this, this definitely is an important thing. Wonderful, thank you both. Um, can you guys touch on how housing works? So are students staying in dorms? Are they doing homestays? Um, and if there are homestays as options, how are the home families chosen? This is a, this is a question for me. Uh, uh, a central part of the program is the homestay. Yeah, I think uh, this program tries to, uh, and it's an immersion program. No? We try students to be speaking in Spanish as much as possible, to learn uh, Spanish culture from inside, to be real, really in contact with society. So we didn't want to, to put them in apartments or, or in dorms. Uh, and, the, and the option of the homestays it's working very, very nicely. It's already 12 years we are doing that. Uh, and we have, at this point, a very large number of, of families that we have been working with, with them for many years. These families are uh, hired by the University of Granada and they are inspected by the University of Granada. They have to pass certain uh, criteria of quality. And then also we, we visit them, we are in contact with them. At this point, some of them are, are good friends. And this doesn't mean that some time to time there are problems no? and, and students know from the day, day one that if there's a problem, first of all, they have to communicate that and we can switch to another family on the spot immediately. I mean, we have uh, not, a, it's not a problem to switch if there is a, any incompatibility. I mean, if uh, what happens that of course, we, we want to, to, to first to talk about, uh, about any issue that might, might be present in, in, in living together. No? For instance, sometimes there are misunderstandings in regarding to food because they provide uh, uh, lunch, uh, dinner, and breakfast. No? For, for instance, in Spain, we love olive oil and garlic. <laughs> it's not always the case. In the, the, in, you know, this is what we like very much, or, or we we like fish all the time. No? We, um, so sometimes uh, we have to simply talk. No, and uh, one of my assistants uh, is the liaison with the families and. And we visit them constantly, and we talk. We and and it's a very good thing because uh, the, the, the the señoras, the host uh, families, uh, always let us know if something is going wrong with the student. For instance, the student is is not uh, is not having fun, or is not leaving the room, or something weird. No, so we know, uh, and that's I think is very important. In, to know things in advance, no, for the safety of everyone, no, and to, uh, in case there is uh, an issue, just to, to talk about it. No? So the house family is, uh, is the safest uh, uh, arrangement, and, I, uh, and and is the more convenient and the and the, the most interesting in, in experience as, as experience in Spain. Wonderful, thank you. Um, that sounds wonderful to have such great relationships with those families. Um, going on that same 
track, and this might be a little too early for you guys to be able to answer, um, but moving forward uh, post pandemic, how do you foresee the coronavirus impacting those housing options and how do you guys foresee handling that, if at all? Yeah, um, well, uh, right now our plan is uh, students will be in, in single rooms, okay? Uh, and they won't share their relation with the family, okay? Uh, there will be another, uh, generally we have two students, two full-time students for per, fam, per, per host family, okay? And uh, visits are not allowed. There's a whole procedure, have a long protocol about how these families uh, have to, to meet this. Uh, in case there is um, uh, some one of the members uh, of one student gets uh, needs to be quarantined uh, and be, uh, be at home for 14 days. Uh, the family has to pro will provide a full support. I mean, is that they they have a, a written commitment no? that they will treat them as if they were their children. I mean, and it's, I, I, just, I think it's very beautiful and very welcoming and very. It's a warm atmosphere, no? in particular in this situation where it's, uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's possible. I mean, even if we, when, when study abroad will we'll be open again, hopefully in the summer, uh, maybe still the vaccine is not for a big one, maybe still this possibility of, of, of infection. No? Well, the families will always uh, take care of, of students in any case, yeah. and that's an important thing. Thank you so much, Rafael. Actually, a really nice segue to our next question. Um, Elizabeth, can you touch on uh, summer 2021 and plans for that session? Sure. So at this time, we are accepting applications for summer 2021. Um, we are planning for it to pr proceed as normal. Of course, our office and you know the university as a whole is, is monitoring the ongoing pandemic. Um, but yeah, plans are moving forward for summer 2021. Um, so students who are interested should definitely, you know, start an application and just start completing that process. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, fingers crossed that everything goes well <laughs> for summer 2021. Um, our next question is a live question. Um, is there somewhere on your website or do you guys have any materials that can have a summary of prerequisites, um, application timelines, cost and credit application specifically for the Granada program? We do have quite a bit of information on our website. Um, all those things can be found on different pages. We do have a specific Fordham and Granada page, um, actually a few pages for the different programs that will discuss housing options, academics, um, program details. And then we also have a cost and funding page and we have a really helpful PDF that breaks down the full cost of the Granada program. Um, so I can certainly drop that in the Q&A or I'm not sure if it might be in your email your follow-up email, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy to include the website in the follow-up email. Um, same vein as that, does your website also have a list of, um, and maybe this is a question for you, Raphael, um, the curriculum or the classes that are offered in Spain? Yeah, definitely. Uh, they appear in our website, most of them, because there are hundreds, as, you, <laughs> as I was saying before, no? I mean, uh, but the, we, we, we listed the most popular ones. No? If a student uh, has a particular question, uh, he or she can email me and I will uh, try to answer as best as I can. Of course, classes uh, courses are, are, are not, I mean, they might change yeah? because professors, they might decide to teach a different course or different subject or whatever. No? So, um, uh, we can guarantee classes just from few months few months before the semester starts. You know, when they precisely when they have to to choose them. You know, uh, there is a whole process after they are accepted into the program, in which I present them all the options. Okay, uh, and they they can choose and, and they can explore. Wonderful, thank you. Um, this question might be for Elizabeth as well, um, but maybe Raphael as as well, you might be able to answer this, um, you know, might not as things are so fluid, but um, 
our live question is, all things considered at this time, is it possible to extend the summer program to include an internship when the educational program ends? I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Rafa, I was waiting to see if you would. <laughs> Uh, well, at this point, at this moment, we we have not a plan on, in our plans. Okay, uh, uh, it's an idea, it's a suggestion. Why not to think about that? Okay, but uh, at, at this moment, we are trying to to have the summer running. <laughs> okay, this is our first concern. No, I I'm not sure if we are we could uh, at this point uh, implement such a request okay so our uh, internships are for the fall and for the uh, for the spring at the, I, in this moment no? uh, in the summer uh, at this point is uh, I, I don't see it for this coming summer let, let, let's put it this way maybe if this are these are questions for the following summer for the 2022 or 2023 we might talk about that Great, thank you. I know some questions are so hard to answer because you just don't know what the future is going to look like. Um, so our next question is for both of you. Um, does the Granada campus have the same resources that the Fordham London campus has? Uh, yes and no, I would say. <laughs> uh, yes, because we count with the resources of the University of Granada. Which is, which is a huge university, you know, and we have so many cultural activities and our students have the idea of the University of Granada, they can take advantage of all their resources, which are, I would say, even bigger than, than resources in New York. I mean, because it's, it's really a huge and very multicultural, international university. Actually, it's the university in Europe with more foreigners from other European countries, more than Paris, more than Rome, more than Berlin, more than Barcelona. So that says a lot about um, our, the University of Canada. Uh, for them in Canada, it's a smaller program. We have uh, uh, two locations. We have a, uh, an office, we have an, a lounge. I mean, we have not as many staff as we have in, in, in London, but we have what we need. I mean, so in the sense, uh, yes, we don't have a, a full building as, <laughs> with the name of Fordham, you know, uh, as they have in London, but we have uh, our office within a building of the University of Granada, we can take advantage of all that. So the answer is yes and no. I don't know if you, Elizabeth, has something else to, to say. Yeah, I would just add it's, it's difficult to compare the two programs, you know, um, but certainly we see the students having the same quality, um, you know, of an experience when they're abroad. We, we hear, you know, wonderful, you know, things from students who are going to Granada. I think the experiences are very different in some ways. As Rafael mentioned, um, you know, students going to Granada are really having a fully immersive experience. Um, so I think it's a, a unique program and quite different from the London program, but in terms of you know, the care that they receive from, from the staff overseas, I would say is, is, you know, parallels what you might see at London. Thank you guys. That's actually a really nice transition to our next live question. Uh, what are some of the best ways for students to completely immerse themselves in the culture of Granada while they are studying there? Well, uh, try to act as an Spaniard. That means <laughs> be on the streets, uh, studying cafes, you know, and meet people. Uh, we have so many uh, activities and programs to design to, to 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 provide students with opportunities to meet Spaniards. You know? uh, we have language exchanges. We have parties with other college students. We have so many uh, activities. Uh, opportunity for social services, or so many things that are going on. So we, we, we succeed in connecting uh, our, our students uh, with, with the people here in, in the street so they can practice the Spanish and not just practice the Spanish, also enjoy a different way of, of behaving, of being on or enjoy, enjoy life. So yeah, uh, from day one is what we do. <laughs> We have uh, parties with chocolate. We, we do so many, so many um, activities, and 
but depends very much, I have to say also, from the attitude from the student. No? If someone is extremely shy, maybe is not able to enjoy that many opportunities, someone is very open, he or she will enjoy all of them. If we detect one person who has more difficulties to engage, no? we, we try to, to help. No? That in that sense, the host families tell us a lot you know, about, about the, the personality of the, of the student and his or her needs, you know, and that's how we work. Wonderful, thank you. That all sounds really great. Um, our next question revolves around um, the proficiency in Spanish from when a student enters versus when they leave. So Rafael, could you maybe touch on how you've seen student Spanish improve and what level um, should be expected for them by the time they leave the Granada program? Well, we have three programs. No? So um, uh, the summer program, they uh, if they are taking a language course, no, they will complete that language course no? they, in, in, in one, in, in one month and a, uh, in five weeks, they will complete that level. If, for instance, if they are in beginner two, they will complete that level and they will jump to, uh, to, to the following level when they come back to, to New York, okay? So, uh, but the question I guess is asking uh, about the experience, how <laughs> the quality of their Spanish, how much improves. And I have to say that although it varies, no, that students who really make a, huge jam or huge different others that a little bit less but in general everybody uh, makes a makes a difference no? and you can notice this particularly for students who continue with the spanish for instance for a major or minor that they take classes in in new york when they come back with a different uh, level of proficiency no? a different skill and and it's normal because they, they have been exposed no constantly to to the language so there is there is a change there's a change um, you realize on, 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 on the student, of course, but uh, opportunities are provided and we are there to, to make sure that the students speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, we do have some questions uh, about more specific courses offered or students of specific majors who are interested in study abroad in Spain. Um, is it possible for a student who is on the pre-med track to stay on track with their studies and also study abroad at the Granada program? I think we can both here answer probably, at least I've had many of these cases. Uh, yes, we had uh, pre-med uh, students in Granada, uh, many. Uh, uh, some of them even took uh, uh, difficult courses in biology, chemistry, you know, that, uh, that, that count towards their, their the pre-med track, okay? In addition to that, they, they can even take some core courses in Granada instead of New York. No? So if they plan well, uh, they can take advantage of that. Of course, uh, it's more complex, a pre-med student. No? It's good that we work ahead, that we plan from, from day one. So if they, they want to apply, they should identify themselves, go to the office and, um, and make a plan, make a plan of their studies, but definitely this is possible. I don't know if you, Elizabeth, has something else to, to add. Yeah, I would just add that we certainly have students who come into our office who may be in a, a major that's a little more difficult, you know, to, to plan ahead and to, to be able to go abroad. And we, you know, offer advising appointments five days a week. Um, so I would just say any student who thinks they can't go abroad because of their major who maybe was even told by a professor or an advisor that it would be very difficult, I would still encourage you to come to our office, make an appointment. A lot of times once we sit down with a student and kind of talk through the different options they have, they realize that it is possible to go abroad in some capacity. So I would say just don't be discouraged. Don't think, oh, I can't go because I'm, you know, on the pre-med track or I'm a chemistry major. It, it still could very well be possible to go abroad. Um, and all of our information, our contact information and our scheduler for our advising appointments are on our website. So you can go there anytime and, and make an appointment with us. I would like to add that we, we also have internships in hospitals, which is something unique, you know. Um, and of course, this applies to for uh, pre-med students. 
in order to, 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 to be able to perform these internships in hospitals, it requires a, a decent level in Spanish. I mean, it's not that you can, you are there making, making problems to, to doctors, no? you are there to help and to, to assist the, the, well, the people. Great, thank you. Um, I know you mentioned, Rafael, that the courses are very, very extensive, um, but one of our attendees is wondering if there are art history courses available in the program, and if so, are they taught in Spanish or English or both? Yeah, uh, there are many. There are many art history courses, yes. Um, uh, there are different levels of difficulty of these uh, uh, art history courses, but there definitely are many. There are many courses. Many, many of our students are attracted to Islamic art, for instance, um, because, well, it makes part of the, of the context of, of Southern Spain. No? So we have plenty of, of this, but also we have courses in any other um, uh, time period of all the art of history. And, uh, and I think also there are courses in English in case you know, uh, someone requires. Wonderful, thank you. Um, we are getting some more questions about uh, the homestays. And Rafael, I think you did mention this, um, but one of our questions is, can two Fordham students be in the same home? Definitely, we try actually to be to uh, for the students in the same home. is uh, is better for for them. Uh, I mean, some students are not used to to to, to travel abroad, to be uh, away from home that that long, <laughs> and the fact that they live with another foreign student helps a lot. No, I mean, uh, and then I mean, Granada is a super safe city. It's very, very, very safe city. We never had an issue and things that don't happen here. No, but it's also a good idea when students go back home at night that they go together. No? Although all of them, they live in the center of the city. I mean, uh, all of these families are very, very close to each other are in the center, the historical center. Which is very convenient. No? We live all there. No? So, but nonetheless, it's even an, an additional uh, layer of safety to, to, to be two people in the same home. Wonderful. Um, and do the hosts only speak Spanish in the home? We ask them to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, uh, uh, there's some that uh, there's some that they, they that don't speak English. Most every, almost everybody speaks a little bit English, of course. No? Uh, but if we want them to to speak in Spanish. But if there's a problem, there's an issue, of course. And this can be can be spoken. No? And we are always there. We are 24 hours a, a day available. No? Me and, and my assistants, in case there is an issue or whatever. No? So this should shouldn't be a, a problem. That's the best way to learn, right? <laughs> as much Spanish as possible. Um, we do have another live question uh, for the spring semester. If a student is um, traveling abroad during the spring semester, is there plenty of time to travel on their own throughout Europe during their stay? Yes, there's plenty of time. I'm, I'm conscious that uh, part of the experience of coming to Europe is, is the ability to, to, to travel and to, to explore places. Just paying <laughs> almost a ridiculous sum for flights with Ryanair or EasyJet. It's really, really easy. It's really easy. Also, we have the the TGV, the the bullet train from Granada going to Madrid and and all the place. It's very easy to travel, and uh, I encourage not to travel too much <laughs> <laughs> because I want them to to be to be kept into a Spanish atmosphere. Okay, however, students generally travel, and there are uh, first in the spring. There is the, the Holy Week, which is a which is ten days in the break in the, in the middle. But there are also general we have three three days weekend. Okay, so um, they will have about four or five, three days weekends, and then two, four days weekend. I mean, they have plenty of opportunities to, to travel. That's wonderful. Um, we did have another question come in about the host family situation. So can you talk about what a typical host family might look like? Is it usually just two parents or are students placed in families that also have children? 
actually we we will avoid children because of the covid situation okay uh, because it's the major risk <laughs> so no children this time although they are great for practicing spanish <laughs> but no no children this time. Um, we have a variety of families and families have, have evolved you know, because we started with them 20 years ago and everything has happened you know? there are families with uh, you know, a father the mother and, the, and and two and two kids you no know, uh, in the in their at, at the university age you know? but they are also uh, all ladies you no know, that uh, and their family comes on weekends you no know? uh, there's a, a large variety or just a couple you know? Uh, there's a, a couple, an old couple. Generally, the age of the families tends to be tends to be uh, above, I would say, 55. Right? Above 55 is above 60, I would say, you know, the, the average. Of course, there's, there are some certain exceptions. And that also gives us certain uh, peace of mind, you know, in the sense that their lives are very, uh, very, they, they do always the same. They, they have their routines. So uh, it's not, they're not young people. That's just to, to, to make it clear. Okay. So. Great. Thank you. Um, this question is a little bit more general in terms of studying abroad, um, but I'm sure, Rafael, you can probably speak to Granada specifically. Um, but does participating in a study abroad program make a student more marketable when applying to jobs or graduate schools? Uh, I'm sure Elizabeth has a lot to say. <laughs> I would say that everything that says Elizabeth now applies to Granada <laughs> because that, indeed, I mean, it makes a huge difference. Elizabeth will talk about that. Regarding Granada, I, I, I become a kind of mentor of my students and I follow them in their careers. You know? uh, and I have students in wonderful, doing incredible careers and it's so very, very beautiful to see that. No? So yeah, I see my students doing very, very well. And I and now Elizabeth will tell you a little bit more of study abroad in general. Sure. I think specifically for um, Fordham in Granada or any immersive language program, um, I mean, I think it's just wonderful to add to your resume that you have another language competency, whether that's at, you know, a basic level or even conversational or fluent um, in another language, specifically Spanish. I mean, certainly in the United States, it's wonderful to be able to <laughs> speak Spanish fluently. Um, so, so many people do speak Spanish in our country now. Um, in general, I think study abroad just certainly does make you more marketable to potential employers. You're showing that you're flexible and independent enough to go live in a different country in a different culture for, you know, a month to four months. Um, and I can certainly speak from <laughs> my personal experience. I graduated from Fordham a few years ago and, and I studied abroad. And at the very least, I think being able to put a study abroad experience on your resume is a wonderful talking point with you know, in any job interview. Um, and again, it just shows that you're adaptable, you've experienced a different culture, um, you know, you, you kind of see the world from a more global perspective. And I certainly think um, in this day and age, so many companies now, um, you know, are, are working with people overseas and everything is so digitalized. And, you know, we see right now we're all Zooming each other and, you know, um, so I, I certainly think it, you know, adds something to your resume and, and just gives you a leg up when you're looking for um, jobs after you graduate. Yeah, the director of study abroad, Joe Rienti, uh, Dr. Rienti, always quotes a, a number that I don't remember, no? the, the percentage, uh, because uh, study abroad, um, students who, who study abroad get uh, better better uh, jobs and get better salaries. No? And the, 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 he always starts <laughs> conversations of study abroad with, with this figure, I, I, which I, uh, I can remember now. No? But seems that indeed makes a, makes a big difference in the, in the future of, for the student. Yeah, I just want to jump in. I personally graduated from Fordham as well, and I studied abroad, not in Granada, but it does sound like a wonderful program. Um, and in a lot of interviews I went on, um, whether I was still a student or post-grad, uh, that was a topic of conversation. Um, so it really is very important for students to showcase that they did study abroad. Uh, so thank you so much for your question. Um, our next question, and um, 
uh, Raphael might be a little biased and Elizabeth, I don't know if, if you've ever been to Granada, um, but it's a hard, it's a little hard to answer the actual question, which semester is the best to go? Because obviously it would be dependent for each student situation. Elizabeth, maybe you can talk to that. But Raphael, maybe you can say what your favorite time of year is in Granada. Well, it's very difficult to say. I mean, any, any, any moment is wonderful. Granada is uh, uh, is wonderful in the, in the fall and it's wonderful in the spring. It's warm during the days, cold at night. We have the sea just half an hour away, uh, and you can actually always that, that the students arrive in the for the spring semester in January. We go to the beach and they and they go and they have a swim there in January. But also uh, uh, in the in the fall is just warm all the the entire the, the, the entire semester and you can enjoy wonderful weather in, in december no so uh, really uh, and one one beautiful thing of granada is that we have many popular festivities no it's a very traditional culture no and they are both in the fall and the spring i i, I really cannot say when is the best moment to go is the student who has to decide depending on their schedule. Wonderful, thank you. I know it's probably so hard uh, for you to choose, but for me, just after this, Granada's definitely gone up on my um, go-to travel list. So I hope to get there soon. Maybe I'll come visit you guys at the Fordham campus. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I hope that everyone found our panel very helpful. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, I will be sending out um, a follow up email or someone from our team will be sending out a follow up email that will have links and resources to a lot of the things that we discussed as well as a recording of this session. So you can share it with your student if they are interested in the Granada program or you can um, rewatch it if you missed anything. I would also like to say that um, Catherine Mandalakis, who is um, my colleague, she was supposed to be here today. She's unfortunately out sick, um, but she is also a very proud alumna of the Granada program and she absolutely loves talking about it. Um, so if anyone would like to connect with her to ask her questions um, as a, Fordham, a young Fordham alum who did study in Granada, I know that she would be very, very happy to chat with anyone. Um, Raphael, I know you, you know her, right? <laughs> she's lovely she's wonderful she's brilliant she's everything yeah. yeah yeah so she would definitely be happy to connect with anyone um so you can get a really fresh perspective from a young alum on her experience there um but thank you so much and as we mentioned we hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and fingers crossed that the world will open up again soon and we'll be able to get back to studying abroad um so thank you guys so much for attending thanks to our panelists and we'll see you guys again soon bye Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you.